Greetings everyone and welcome back. For season three, I'm starting the restoration of the Harrisoff Eagle I picked up in 2018. A big shout out and thanks to the folks at Total Boat and Jamestown Distributors for their sponsorship of this project. Look in the show notes below for a discount code for all of your Total Boat purchases. I didn't do a whole lot on the Eagle this last summer. I wanted to take advantage of as much of the sailing season as I could. I got more evening sunset sails in in 2019 than I ever have before. Several nights I could have just stayed out there with the gentle breeze all night long. But all good things must come to an end and the always short sailing season here in the Midwest yawns and stretches and ultimately surrenders to the winter for the next 82 months. So on a cool November morning, it was time to drop the mast, motor on over to the ramp and pull her out for her trip home and more work to be done over the winter. I'll be covering that in future episodes. Lots of interesting things going on there. But back to the Eagle. To recap, over a year ago in December of 2018, I was doing something I really shouldn't do. Surfing the Facebook page for free boats. Yes, we all know what free boats are. But I came across a posting by someone who had inherited a marina in Maryland and said the abandoned boats on the property had to go. On January 2nd, anything there was going to be crushed up and sent to the landfill. I was amazed to see this little jewel on the first picture. At first I thought it was a friendship sloop, but a little closer look and I realized this is a rather rare Harrisoff Eagle. This boat was designed by Halsey Harrisoff, who also designed the America Cat boat I have. They were all designed in the early 1970s and were intended as a sailing homage to the 1976 U.S. Bicentennial. This boat really seemed to call to me. It was free for the taking, but it was at Cobb Island Marina in Maryland, a long way away from Ohio, with no immediate way to get out there and get it, no money for having someone else haul it back to Ohio, and it had to be retrieved soon. Made absolutely no sense whatsoever to go and get it. So I did. I told the property owner I'd take it and he gave me the okay, come and get it. And the reality started to set in about what I had just done. How am I gonna do this? How am I gonna get it? When am I gonna get it? How do I survive my wife's reaction to finding out I got another boat? The first thing I did was to find someone who could at least get it out of there and store it somewhere safe so I could come and get it later. That's when I found Jesse at Honey Badger Hauling. This fellow was really worth every dime I spent on his services. He really went out of his way to get everything taken care of and, in my opinion, went well above and beyond. He was able to get it out of the marina and store it someplace so I could come and get it a month later in January. While I had to wait, I was curious to find out as much as I could about it. The marina, it turns out, had some aerial photos done of it a few years ago for their website and to my surprise, I was able to see the eagle there plain as day. I also pulled up Google Maps and I could see it pretty clearly. So I started to run the calendar back. 2018, 2015, 2013, 2011, 2007, 2006, and the last shot they had was in 2005. Interestingly, I got a message from someone who knew the original and second owners. This is basically what he told me. He said, I can't help with the name. The leather-skinned, tobacco-chewing, foul-mouthed old grump would do anything for anybody. He rode to a nicer restaurant once with his family in the 1970s, way underdressed for the place. He was politely asked if he'd like to change before he went. He said, why? This is perfect. I love to lend a little color to what other mice might be a stuffy place. We all called him Chief. He introduced himself that way. He was a deck boss on the USS America from her launch all the way through a third tour of Vietnam. Sometime after that, something happened and left him with a bad limp and a medical discharge. None of us ever knew his name. He had a sailing buddy from the same ship who became the second owner and nobody knows his name either. Chief just called him Sparks, something to do with his Navy job. Anyway, he called the boat Independence because it was, I guess, his independence. When the Navy decided to park and scrap his beloved America, he was furious. He had three wooden name boards made up. One for each side and one for the stern with America on them. He said if they're going to retire the name, he'd use it and that was that. 
The last I saw her, she was in perfect Navy tradition, and Sparks was out there with a can of Brasso making things sparkle. So when I saw it this last summer as you found it, I was pretty sad. Good memories of those two characters in that boat. I asked around town and Chief was diagnosed with colorectal cancer and was gone within a month. He willed everything he had, even his house, to Sparks. Around 18 years ago, he sold the house and moved near his daughter and never came back. So it's officially been on the heart for about 18 years. I'm conveying this all because I would love to know who these fellows were and their stories. So if anyone has a clue as to who these guys were or how I can get in touch with their relatives, please let me know. Anyway, back to the boat. I asked my friend Skip, another Harishoff America catboat owner from my yacht club at Indian Lake, if he'd come out with me to Maryland to help pick the boat up sometime in January. He agreed and a couple weeks later, we set out for the day's drive to Maryland. Take the night to rest and load her up on my trailer the next day and drive it all back to Ohio. I had a lot more plans to film the transfer and maybe even do a live broadcast, but as we got closer, the blizzard that was scheduled to come in a few days out was making its way a lot faster and sooner than expected. Of course. Getting this boat loaded up and back on the road as soon as possible became the priority. It looked in rough shape, but it did float long enough for us to get it onto my trailer and pull it out of there. We headed back, but the blizzard moved in too. With hazardous road conditions, towing a sailboat over snow-covered mountains was not a wise idea. So we pulled off, got the last two rooms at a hotel, and waited the storm out. Next day's drive back to Ohio was no problem. I can't thank my friend Skip enough who helped me out with this adventure. I couldn't have done it without him. Lots of snow back home, but I was able to secure it and come back over the coming days to evaluate it and take off whatever I needed to to try and protect it from the weather. I took off the cabin steps, which are in decent shape but will need to be cleaned up. I also took off the nice running lights. Overall, they're in excellent shape, but a good cleaning and some new mounts and they're going to look great back on the restored boat. I also removed the bronze steering quadrant and a few other items of hardware. But I'm not a real big fan of working in the deep cold. On days I couldn't work on the boat, I did some research to find out more about these boats and what they look like in top condition. Here are a few shots I found online and they give me a lot of ideas as well as looking forward to how great this boat's going to look when it's fully restored. I also picked up a few items on eBay I knew I was going to need when I saw them available. With the original wheel gone, I even found a great antique brass wheel for it, made in Scotland of course. As spring of 2019 rolled around, I had a few days in March above freezing where I could give it a good cleaning to get all the years of grime and lichens off of it with a good bath. Seeing it come alive again just being clean was really something to see. I was also able to finally see the maker's plate indicating the hull was made by TSP, the HE indicating Harrisoff Eagle, hull number 89, and that it was made in March of 1974. It occurred to me as I saw this that I was starting to bring it back to its second life exactly 45 years to the month after she was made. That's got to be a good omen. I really can't wait to see her back to glory. Once summer finally came around, I needed to get it to where I could work on it and on the heart instead of on the dodgy trailer I had it on. I built a temporary lifting gantry and hoisted it up to get it off the trailer and settled back onto some new cribbing to get it on the ground and stable. This eagle can still fly. I then built a temporary structure around it so I could tend it to keep it out of the weather as well as work on it on the inside when temperatures permitted. Looks like a monstrosity, but it works and it's incentive for me to get it done as soon as I can. And she'll have good company for the winter. Now to really look her over. When I got it, I mentioned I was amazed that the cockpit sole was completely solid. Well, it's still in decent shape, but after the thaw, I realized that the stiffness was due to whatever core was left there was frozen. After it thawed, it was spongy. But the envelope hasn't been breached. The core can't really be salvaged, but I think I have a better way of reinforcing the fiberglass instead of redoing the entire cockpit, like I did with the America, which was in much worse shape. I'll cover that in a future episode. Inside the cabin, things are a little better, 
It looks like it was fairly protected, but the cabin sole was completely shot too. That's another common problem with these boats. The centerboard trunk has a slit in the top, so I can see the condition of the centerboard. It's got a lot of rust on it, and it seems to be jammed in there pretty good, but I'm going to have to take a closer look at that at some later date. I don't know if it can be salvaged or not. The good news is the lowering mechanism is still there, so that'll save me some headache. Now here's a mystery. We never could get the mast out. Jesse had to cut it off, which isn't a really big deal because I was going to put a tabernacle mast on it anyway. But how in the world does it come out? Nothing securing it is accessible from the sides or the top. Since I was going to replace the cabin sole with a new one and had a better design for it, I decided to go ahead and remove the material, which would also give me a look at the mast boot. You never know what treasures you're going to find in an old boat bilge. And you can see the core here is pretty well shot, just like my cat boats was. And I could finally see how the mast was attached. Three little screws on the side of the mast that went into the mast boot that was mounted on a fiberglass mound into the hull. With the Harris Off America, the mast was mounted so far forward you could get to that mast boot by access through the forward hatch. No such luck here. I figured the only way they could have done this was to secure the mast in its boot and then fiberglass the boot to the hull then lay the cabin sole interior over it. Once that's done, there's no way to get to those screws. I have a little better solution for the future. And since I had the tools out, I decided to go ahead and take off the seats as well. The core in these was shot just like my cat boat was. And this old design allowed for water to get trapped underneath the wooden seats. I've got a better idea for that as well. Be covering that in a future episode. After that, I wanted to get some more hardware off, including the steering mechanism and the chain place with which I had some concerns. It was the only place I could see water ingress into the fiberglass with mold forming inside of it. That worried me. I generally don't like anything mounted like this where water can get between the seams of the hardware and the decking. It's only a matter of time before it fails. I had assumed the chain plates, though, went into the hull somehow. But that didn't seem to be the case once I opened it up and took a bit of a look to see how they went in through the decking. I realized these dodgy patches in the cabin had something to do with the chain plates. I tore off this thin piece of fiberglass to see a plank of wood there completely soaked and rotted. So that all had to come out and hopefully I could see how the chain plates were mounted. It didn't come off easily, but once I finally got it off, I realized how it was mounted. It was just a small bronze strap angled 90 degrees with one side screwed into this small plank of untreated wood with one screw. Wow. Totally rotten. And the other part angled up through the deck. That's about as bad of a design as I could imagine. The slot where the chain plate comes through the deck was an imminent and obvious failure point. Once that happens, that's it for the wood. But one of the biggest issues I saw was how the chain plates worked, even if the water had never gotten in. Mounted under the deck, especially with such a small bracket and small and compressive piece of wood, all of the load from the rigging will pull up on a very small distribution area of the load onto the deck. Right where the chain plates are mounted is a seam between the fiberglass deck and the hull fiberglass. This will create stress in that seam and eventually damage it. I've seen this happen to other boats, once to the point on an inner lake where the deck fiberglass section detached from the hull and the boat sank as a result. So what to do about this? I put out a request on here on a previous video for your comments, and I bounced a few ideas I had off of some shipwrights I know like Dan Shea and Andy up at Boatworks Today. Sorry, I just love how he says Boatworks Today. They all gave me some good advice and perspectives, so I decided to do two things. First, I will place the new chain plates on the outside of the hull. This will do several things. One is that it'll transfer any rigging loads directly into the hull like it should have done in the first place, instead of through the deck. But with some weakness in the deck as well, and wanting to distribute the load over a larger area, traditional sailing architecture I have studied gave me an idea. I'm going to be adding some knees to the interior of the cabin. 
These will be thick pieces of wood cut to match the curvature of the hull as well as providing some support for the deck above without sending any more rigging load into it. These are both traditional ways of handling rigging forces without flexing the seams and preventing water incursion. It's also going to give the boat a much more traditional look, especially with some woodworking I will do and some total boat products that are going to really seal this up and make it stronger. It's going to look great and work great. There's a lot more to go into about the Eagle restoration I'll be covering all this season. Also coming up are some videos on some side projects I've been working on. I mentioned to you working with Liberty Launch, which is a project to help vets and other people with PTSD heal through the therapy of sailing these magnificent schooners in the Chesapeake Bay. I can't wait to tell you more about that one too. Thanks to my patrons for helping out with these videos. If you'd like to become a patron, the link is below in the show notes. And again, check out the promo code below for your discount on total boat purchases. Thanks again for watching. I'll be back as soon as I can with another video. Fair winds and following seas.